Hello and welcome in to another edition of the Tech in 10 postgame show brought to you by the Rustin Daily Leader. I am sports reporter Matt Bellinson coming to you from Joe IE Stadium after what I called a thriller in my story um, from tonight's game. Uh, unfortunately for the Bulldogs, they come up uh, on the short side of this one. Rice wins 42-41 to uh, for Tech's homecoming game. Um, this was one of the better football games I can remember watching. Um, if you're Louisiana Tech, you know, obviously ends in heartbreak. Um, you obviously, you know, we're hoping to continue your home winning streak here and, you know, get back uh, a Conference USA victory after really stumbling against North Texas a week ago. Um, but give Rice credit. They, they hunt around and, and were able to make plays down the stretch. And Sonny Cumbie said it himself. Comes down to execution in games like this. Um, and for the Bulldogs, they are now 2-5 and five on the season and 1-2 and two in Conference USA play. Let's dive in. Um, there's a lot to get to. Uh, if you didn't watch this game live, um, man, there's a lot to catch up on. Not, not enough time here um, to catch you up on all of it. But I'm going to first just run through the final couple of plays um, and how this kind of unfolded. So we obviously started the game. Parker McNeil is your starting quarterback. He doesn't even make it through the end of the first quarter. He's unfortunately injured. Um, Sonny Cumbie said post game that you know will they'll evaluate his status going forward. You know he stood on the sideline in full pads the rest of the game, but he did not return, um, and so that left Matthew Downing, the TCU transfer to come in in relief, um, and he did, played pretty well. Um, you know I think at the start it was still took a little bit for him to kind of get back into a game flow. You know he hasn't played in over five weeks uh, in this system. Parker McNeil has been the no doubt starter over the last couple of weeks, um, and Downing played okay. You know, at times, was able to find Smoke and Trey Harris for some big plays. Um, the Bulldogs were, you know, unfortunately without their starting tight end, Griffin Bear today. Um, and we'll get to, we'll get into the injuries here in a little bit. But um, I thought Downey led the offense pretty well for the most part. Um, you know, they took a 28, 27-21 to 21 lead, excuse me, uh, heading into the fourth quarter. Um, and that's when things kind of took a turn. Um, Rice kept chipping away, as linebacker Hugh Davis told me in the second half. Um, and they finished the game with nearly 300 rushing yards. Um, the run defense for Tech, you know, it was not good enough once again. Um, and the Owls were able to take advantage. Um, quarterback TJ McCann, TJ McMahon, I should say, um, he rushed for a 64-yard touchdown um, to take the lead over Louisiana Tech, 28-27. And then just a few plays, a few drives later, I should say. Um, Owls were able to take a 35 to 27 lead um, with just under four minutes to play, and you thought, okay, I mean, you know, Bulldogs roll over here in the final couple minutes. You know, defense kind of collapses with some injuries, kind of plaguing them, um, and you thought that was it. Um, and then Matthew Downing has under four minutes to play, leads them down uh, inside the Rice 34, and then gets knocked out of the game with a with a roughing the passer call um, on Rice. Um, and so that left Landry Liddy, a true freshman quarterback who had thrown two collegiate passes up until this point to come in and try and tie the game. Um, and, and, you know, I, I, there's, there's been a lot of talk about what Liddy can and can't do. Um, obviously, with the obvious frustrations and lack of consistency out of Parker McNeil to start the season, uh, a lot of Bulldogs fans, from what I saw online, we're just asking, hey, you know, what's the harm of getting Liddy some time? You can see what he can do. Um, obviously, the Gatorade, you know, Louisiana Gatorade Player of the Year, you know, pretty highly rated recruit um, for Sonny Cumby to get. And the Bulldogs, I think they found some real encouragement of what this guy can do. Um, with under 40 seconds left, there was an absolute dime to Cyrus Allen in the back corner of the end zone to tie up the game. Um, or I should say, to make it a one-point game, um, and then finds you know Trey Harris for a, a beautiful uh, one-handed one-handed catch um, in the back of the end zone to tie it up 35-35, and then we went to overtime, uh, and Rice used another solid running attack and it scored pretty quickly on the Bulldogs, um, and then Landry Liddy was able to throw another touchdown pass uh, to Trey Harris. Um, to make it, you know, 42 to 41. And I, I give credit to Sonny Cumbie. You know, if I, if I was in that situation too, I'm always up for, you go for the win. You're here to win. You came into this game pretty depleted from an injury standpoint. Um, you know, let's just end it right here. Um, and I love that. I mean, obviously Landry Liddy was able to 
dial up some momentum. And I love giving it into a freshman's hands right there, um, the hot hand, I should say. And um, I, I, I like that decision. Um, I think based on how your defense was playing, I think Rice probably would have just gone and scored again, um, and then you kind of toss it up. So I, I like the decision there um, to go for it and try to win. Um, to go back to Liddy for a second, though, um, you know Trey Harris called it courageous. Um, his performance, you know, again, two collegiate passes. I mean, I've never seen something like that. Two collegiate passes before entering, you know, a must-score situation for Louisiana Tech, uh, and he only takes one throw for the kid um, to give Louisiana Tech a chance. Um, I think you see why so many people are excited about him and in this program. Um, I mean, the passes that he threw in the red zone, obviously short yardage, uh, but were very precise. And, and you know, like Sonny Cumbie, Sonny Cumbie said post game, he put them right where they needed to be, um, and gave Trey Harris and Cyrus Allen chances to make plays. I think if you you know were observing the Bulldogs through the first couple weeks, that was definitely a knock on Parker McNeil. Was you know definitely a strong arm, but at times accuracy was a big reason why he was throwing the ball, you know, into the opponent's hands so many times. Um, you know, obviously it's a small sample size, literally only threw seven passes tonight. Um, but if you're Louisiana Tech, there were some encouraging signs about what this kid could bring to this program. Uh, it'll be interesting to see who starts at quarterback next week for the Bulldogs. Uh, it's a shortened week as um, they head to Florida International University uh, for a Friday night game this coming week. Um, and Sonny Cumbie said that Parker McNeil and Matthew Downing's statuses will will be determined throughout the week, and then the starter will be named going in. Um, you know, from what I saw from McNeil on the sideline, it didn't seem like he was getting a lot of rotation on his throwing arm, uh, trying to warm up and try and get back into game speed. Um, you know, so I mean, obviously I'm not a doctor, and that gives no indication as to his status during this week. But um, from what I saw throughout the entire game, for, for them to not even – you know, think it would be worth it to th throw him back in there. That that leaves me to believe that there's something that he needs time to heal from. Um, and I think if you're Sonny Cumbie, you got to weigh the options of, you know, do we let this freshman um, lead us the rest of the way and, and we, you know, get to see what he has, wins or losses? Um, it's a compelling argument to make. Um, you know, I'm not paid those dollars to make those decisions, um, which way is right or wrong. Um, but what I will say is tonight this kid... This kid showed quite a lot um, in just a brief period of time to give, I think, this loss. It's obviously you know, a disappointing result, but I think it gives the loss some silver lining to go forward. Uh, because at, obviously at the beginning of the year, there was a lot of questions of you know, whether Parker McNeil or Matthew Downey were even close to being the answer. Um, and you know, Parker McNeil, pretty solid performance before he exited today's game, unfortunately. But it'll be interesting to see if Landry Liddy can uh, rise and, and take that spot. Um, and before we get out of here, I do want to briefly just touch on, obviously, the, the, you know, the injuries that plagued the Bulldogs today. Um, they came in without their second leader receiver in tight end Griffin Abair. Um, you know, Sonny Covey would not divulge what his injury was post game, um, and then the Bulldogs were also without their two starting safeties in B.J. Williamson and Jaden Cole. Um, again, Sonny Covey did not specify what those injuries were. Uh, Williamson was warming up and, and was in pads for the entire game, um, and then in the second half, both he and McNeil came out in full pads but without their helmets on, um, which indicated they probably weren't going to see any action that day. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how Louisiana Tech can respond, you know, without some of the regular starters. Obviously, linebacker Tyler Grubbs, we knew over the past couple of weeks, has been dealing with an injury. Um, he missed, you know, today's game, unfortunately. And I think if you're Louisiana Tech, this defense desperately needs to get healthy um, because this run defense and sometimes today the pass defense, um, it, it can crumble quickly. And I think despite the encouragement with Landry Liddy at the end and, and some uh, plays from Matthew Downing, of course, I think this defense, it just needs time off. And unfortunately, it's a shortened week. They're going to have limited time to get, you know, get rested before they have to hit the field again. Um, but this is now, I'm, I'm going to pull it up here. They gave up 282 rushing yards today, which makes their season average. They've given up 266 yards rushing per game. Um, you, know, you can say, obviously, today they were missing some key starters, um, but they were giving this up with their two starting safeties, you know, with Tyler Grubbs in the mix, uh, with some starting defensive linemen still in the mix. 
Um, and Louisiana Tech is still without answers um, as to how to stop opponents on the ground. Um, and I think if you're Louisiana Tech, that's a concern because the air raid offense, you need to play with tempo, you're going to want to score quick. Um, and then if you're you know, handing the ball back to your opponent and then they can just wear your defense down um, with run after run after run, that, that gives your offense less time to score and try and get back in the games. Um, it's obviously a concern for Louisiana Tech in this defense. And I think getting healthy will make things easier. But at the same time, I'm, I'm not, I haven't seen any answers um, that this is going to get any better anytime soon, even if guys come back healthy uh, this coming Friday versus Florida International. Um, but in the end, uh, Louisiana Tech loses a heartbreaker, uh, 42-41 to Rice. Um, the Bulldogs, you know, Sonny Covey says, showed us some fight, um, but in the end still have to learn how to play a full game. Um, and until they do that, Louisiana Tech um, will still be in search uh, of its second Conference USA victory. Um, and so with that being said, uh, that's going to do it for us on this week's edition of Tech in 10. Uh, for Matt Bellinson from the Rustin Daily Leader, thank you all for listening.